And I would just like to first of all say thank you everybody for coming. My name is Randy Eusen. I'm uh, the Evanston Chamber of Commerce Board President and uh, proud to be here. Um, I just wanted to go ahead and acknowledge some other distinguished guests that we have. And I uh, guess before I do that, first uh, we'd like to thank the North Shore University Health System who is our presenting sponsor today. And uh, we'll hear... We're going to hear a little bit uh, from uh, J.P. Gallagher in a minute or so. Our business sponsor is AT&T. I'd like to thank them. We'd like to also acknowledge Umbrellas on the Beach Creative Shop for our invitation and the design. And of, and of course, the Hotel Orrington, which uh, has provided us uh, great food and beverage in a terrific environment, and uh, Russ Abel and his staff. So thank you very much. The, um, a few folks I'd like to acknowledge that are here this afternoon. I saw um, our former mayor, Lorraine Morton. I know she's in the house. There's Lorraine. Great to see you. And our uh, former U.S. Senator, Carol Mosley Braun. Our City of Evanston, uh, Rodney Green, the City Clerk. And next to Rodney, our Township Assessor, Bonnie Wilson. Now, some of our Alder people, uh, our first ward Alder woman, Judy Fisk. Is Judy here? Our fourth ward Alderman, Don Wilson. Our fifth ward Alder woman, Dolores Holmes. Our sixth ward Alderman, Mark Tendum. Our seventh ward, Alderwoman Jane Grover. Our ninth ward, Alderwoman Colleen Burris. Our city of Evanston manager, Wally Bobkowitz. Our District 202 School Superintendent, Eric Weatherspoon. We're also joined today by the Mayor of Highland Park, Mayor Michael Belsky. Uh, our also District 65 board member, Jerome Summers. and our judge-to-be, Stephen Bernstein. Also formerly an alderman for the city of Evanston. Uh, what I'd like to do now is uh, just say a few words about our program this afternoon. The, uh, this luncheon has become a traditional event presented by the Evanston Chamber of Commerce. We would like, again, to thank our various generous uh, sponsors the presenting sponsor, North Shore University Health Systems, and our business sponsor, AT&T, for helping the chamber to stage this event, which affords us the opportunity to bring together important, influential parties in Evanston that provide synergy for our community. These include our city employees, public officials, educational organizations, businesses small and large, both for-profit and not-for-profit, and culturally significant entities which all make Evanston a most desirable city to live, work, and play in. And also, uh, a little bit of a history here, the State of the City Address was started in 1977 by one of my mentors at First Bank and Trust, former Mayor Jay Lytle.
the, uh, the Award for the Arts, for recognition of the arts and for their contribution to the city and the community was added in 1980, so it's already 30 years as well. So both are very important, and uh, the presentations affecting the city currently and helping to establish our future. So now, with not further ado, I'd like to invite J.P. Gallagher, he's the president of Evanston Hospital, to come up and make a few remarks. Thanks, Randy, and good afternoon. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today as we acknowledge our achievements and celebrate our future as a community. And in a short period of time, uh, most importantly, we'll have the chance to hear from Mayor Tisdall, who has already demonstrated her ability to lead and bring significant benefits to the city. Now, I, I first had the pleasure to get to know uh, Mayor Tisdall when she was our uh, alderman in the seventh ward when I first came over um, to take my assignment at Evanston Hospital about six years ago. And I had not been on the job for, for more than a week when someone just mentioned almost in passing, um, uh, someone, some folks are asking about this incinerator. And uh, I sort of stopped and I, you know, I have to confess, I didn't even know we had an incinerator. So I, uh, I went down, I, I found out where it was. I actually uh, spent more time than I ever would have uh, guessed uh, with, with both Mayor Tisdall and uh, many other individuals. I became quite expert, frankly, uh, in how it functioned, how we tested it. Uh, and I think the best, the best thing to say is that what followed in the next six months was a very valuable lesson um, for me about what it means to be a visible and uh, important part of the community. And in case anyone's wondering, there is no incinerator. It's gone. There's, there's a third boiler I can point it out to you if you're interested in seeing it and uh, be happy to give you tours. But nevertheless, uh, as we've moved on, uh, we at Evanston Hospital are thankfully uh, very focused on taking care of our patients. And it's been a pleasure to work with the mayor, both as an alderman and in her current capacity. While the city of Evanston has many exciting changes to celebrate, uh, Evanston Hospital, as part of North Shore University Health System, has also been making some great strides in the community, and I'm, I'm pleased to share just a little bit about that. As the second largest employer in Evanston, we deeply value our relationships with community leaders, many of whom are obviously, as you know, here today. And while there's so much that I can share with you about North Shore University Health System, I don't want to use today to hit you with too many statistics from the past year or so. Never mind the fact that uh, North Shore is ranked 10th in the nation in NIH funding among independent teaching uh, hospitals. And does it really matter that Veraspan ranked us among the uh, top 100 integrated healthcare systems in the country? Or that we were named one of the nation's top 100 hospitals for the 13th year more than any other hospital in the country? I mean, really, who's counting? Um, <laughs> So we, we certainly are proud of our track record, both nationally and, and especially right here locally. And I'd like to take a couple of minutes to highlight some of the exciting developments that are underway at North Shore, which I think are relevant to all of us. Uh, we continue to grow by giving patients greater access to a true network of excellent care across a full spectrum of healthcare services. We have now over 75 locations throughout the region, spanning from Gurney to Barrington to Chicago to obviously right here in Evanston. And our use of technology is providing seamless and unified ways for us to provide a, a continuous experience for our patients. Uh, one example of this is our, our North Shore Connect portal. It's basically a web portal that allows you as the patient to log in to a secure system and have full access to your medical records. You can email your physician. You can set up an appointment. Um, you can get your test results. So it's really promoting a, a, a great degree of connectivity on the terms of the patient in a way that works very effectively. And this is just one of the ways that we're shaping uh, the way that healthcare in the future is going to be delivered. Now, we've also begun to raise awareness just about North Shore, who we are more broadly, through our new branding campaign as the uh, official local healthcare partner of the Olympics. So if you've been watching the games, you may have seen, uh, seen, seen our commercial. And the, the tagline that we've been using is the notion of excellence all around you. And that really uh, highlights the pride that we take in making sure that all those elements of care that our patients need are easily accessible. In addition, our relationships with the Chicago Bears and Blackhawks have brought new attention to our brand, strengthening our outreach and emphasizing our value in the community. And what about here in Evanston? Um, how have you improved an already highly regarded hospital? For starters, uh, one of the big changes is we've assembled one of the most experienced and respected teams in the country that treat uh, neuro and spine uh, conditions. Our existing group of talented neuro and, uh, and spine surgeons was recently joined by neurosurgeons from the Chicago Institute of Neurosurgery and Neuroresearch, otherwise known as CINN. Patients now have access to care for the most complex neurological issues, including Alzheimer's disease, memory disorders, ep epilepsy, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, and stroke. 
We've also begun the process of expanding the psychiatric services available at Evanston Hospital by combining the existing program at our Skokie Hospital location with the one that's currently available on our Evanston campus. When the renovation is complete this summer, our new program will provide 21 private rooms dedicated to psychiatric care. The inpatient program will be run in concert with our adult partial hospitalization program and the Chapman Center for the Treatment of Substance Abuse. And when it's complete, these changes will reflect an expansion of mental health services available to the communities that we serve. Now, our commitment to community outreach is also evident in the $170 million in community benefits that we provide as an organization across North Shore, and that also includes the charity care that we provide locally through our outpatient department. Last year, we treated near, nearly 5,000 adults and children who received the same quality and compassionate care irrespective of their ability to pay. Our staff works diligently with each patient, providing access to both primary and subspecialty services, and the care provided by this very dedicated team is based solely on a patient's medical needs. It's both a point of pride for our organization and provides access to much needed services in the community. So as we continue to meet the needs of individual patients, we must also be aligned to account for the growth in certain services that we continue to be approached about. And last year, uh, over 3,000 cancer patients came to North Shore for answers. They had questions they didn't even know to ask. They sought guidance and advice on how to stop their disease in its tracks. And our doctors and staff have been with them every step of the way. And I'm very excited to, to share with you that in just a couple of weeks, North Shore will open the doors of our new Kellogg Cancer Care Center. It's being, uh, uh, it has been completed right on the same location of the previous facility, but it is now a much larger structure with really a, a patient focus in mind. It was designed by our doctors, our nurses, uh, and our staff, as well as our patient advisory council. And it really is tailored to understanding the patient's complete uh, oncology experience. We'll be able to provide the highest quality and most advanced treatment in medical, surgi surgical, and radiation care, as well as clinical and emotional support through our integrated medicine program and our new what we're calling our GPS nurse navigator program. Essentially what the GPS program will do is it's exciting because it'll, allow, it'll partner each patient with a trained nurse who is able to help guide that patient through their entire continuum of care, whether it's setting up appointments, counseling them about uh, dietary needs, and really making sure that that entire experience is easy to navigate. So as, as I hope you can tell, I'm both excited and proud about what we're doing at Evanston Hospital to support this very vibrant community. And our commitment is both longstanding and very deep. So these are exciting times for both North Shore and the city of Evanston. I thank you for your uh, time and attention. Enjoy today's lunch, the program, and of course the company that surrounds you. Take care. I just, uh, just have to say on a personal note, an endorsement for the hospital. My father had two surgeries there during 2009 and it was very, very well taken care of, so thanks. Uh, next, I would like to introduce our mayor, newly elected Mayor Elizabeth Tisdall. She uh, was elected in April by uh, a very wide margin. She has uh, quite a pedigree here. She's proudly served as Alderwoman in the seventh ward for several years. She also served on the board of District 202. She has been a leader in educational funding reform and brings to this job a wealth of public and business policy experience. And we at the chamber were particularly excited that Mayor Tisdall has made economic development one of the cornerstones of her campaign. So without uh, further delay, Mayor Tisdall. Thank you very much. Um, there are a few people I'd like to acknowledge. Uh, Gretchen Livingston, a District 202 board member, came in. Uh, Gretchen, where are you? And Senator Jeff Schoenberg is here. And then there's one other person I'd like to acknowledge. Uh, and I can see the headlines now. It'll say, Mayor of Evanston throws president of Northwestern University out of state of the city speech. But uh, <laughs> President Morty Shapiro is here. He 
has a board meeting, which he's left to come here. So thank you for doing that, Morty. And if he doesn't get back soon, he will no longer be the president of Northwestern. <laughs> and then I'll have to... And I don't want to bake cookies for the new guy, so <laughs> you just, when you have to leave, more do you leave. Uh, there is a burning issue in Evanston, the question I hear all over town. The thing everybody wants to know is, how is Lorraine? Well, she's right over there. <laughs> She's fine, but in an unusual circumstance, I have the mic now and she doesn't, so I'm going to tell you a story about her. <laughs> My first day of work as mayor, I needed to call Lorraine and ask her a question. Dara said she wasn't at home. She was at a meeting. I said, how can she be at a meeting? It's 9 a.m. on the first day of her so-called retirement, and besides, I need her. That afternoon, Lorraine returned my call. I asked my question. She said, are you at the desk? I said, yes. She said, turn around. I did. And she said, there are four black binders in front of you, and there were. <laughs> she said, the answer's in the third binder on the right, and it was. <laughs> so don't worry, Evanston is functioning well on a two-mayor system of government. <laughs> And I was going to say nice things about Jay Lytle um, and a three-mayor system of government, but since I found out he started this tradition and got me in trouble here today, um, I'm not saying anything nice about Jay. <laughs> there is someone else here today who I would like to recognize. One of the great assets in Evanston is Rotary International. They are represented here by their general secretary, Mr. Ed Fuda. Where are you, Ed? It's an honor to have the International Rotary Headquarters in Evanston. They do wonderful work in communities throughout the world. They are best known for their work to eradicate polio, but attend a local meeting, and you will find out they do much more. The first, and to date the only key to the city I have awarded, went immediately to John Kenney, the International President of Rotary. Having made a decision to voluntarily pay their property taxes, they have earned the respect and admiration of every Evanstonian. When I bought my city sticker, the Rotary stickers were sold out, and I had to settle for the YMCA. Just, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. I am, I am happy to have the Y sticker, but the Rotary did sell out. I tell you, Jay, this speech is getting me in trouble already. <laughs> The state of the city of Evanston is similar to the state of cities th throughout the United States. President Obama, Secretary Timothy Geithner, and Larry Summers all told mayors attending the U.S. Conference of Mayors the same thing. Your job is extremely difficult. That we already knew. <laughs> you have to take all our solutions to the problems created by the Great Recession and make them work. The state of a city cannot be judged merely by whether or not we have problems. We all have serious problems, but the issue is how we work to resolve those problems, and that is what I would like to address here today. This community has some terrific assets. We have the lake, Northwestern University, two major hospitals, proximity to Chicago, public transit, a marvelously diverse population, and, of course, an awesome Chamber of Commerce. But one asset that we have that we do not include on the list often enough is some incredibly talented city staff. Dennis Marino, Sue Gunderly, Sarah Flax, and the entire community development staff should be household names. I'm here to tell you why. Foreclosures threaten what we prize most about our community the diversity of the people. The second, fifth, and eighth wards have suffered horribly. Much of this is due to predatory lending, increasing unemployment, and the credit collapse minimizing housing demand for homes and condos. 
More than 25% of all loan originations in those wards were subprime mortgages, more than triple the city average of 7%. In July 2009, the City of Evanston submitted its application for HUD's Neighborhood Stabilization Program II, a competitive grant program funded by the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. Our target areas in West and South Evanston qualified. The City of Evanston partnered with Brinshore Development to propose a program that used our combined experience and knowledge to renovate and develop housing units, many of which cannot be sold or have been foreclosed following the credit meltdown. This program would allow the city to address the need of stabilizing the housing market within those three wards. To understand the rest of the story about what this money can do, I'll tell you the same story that I told Senator Burris, Senator Durbin, and Evanston's own Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky. It's a story about a little stretch of Gray Street. Last summer, a young man from Chicago was murdered on Gray Street. That evening, I went door to door talking with people about what the city could do to make their streets safer. They told me, living next to foreclosed homes means crime moves in when residents move out. Alderman Holmes had been on Gray Street earlier that day. We talked about what we should do. Dolores wanted to and did encourage the residents to form a block club to empower them to reclaim their streets. I asked the senators and Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky to give the people on Gray Street some help. Because, and I cannot emphasize this enough, because of an incredibly well-written, accurate, detailed application by our city staff, Senator Richard Durbin and Congresswoman Schakowsky called me to say that we were one of 56 cities in the nation to receive NSP2 funds. Evanston's share will be $18,150,000. Now the challenge is to invest the money wisely, and we will. We are going to reclaim neighborhoods. Thanks go to Senator Burris, Dave Davis, who's here today, of Congresswoman Schakowsky's office. He held my hand many times through this process. Congresswoman Schakowsky and Senator Durbin for all their help. Government can work at all levels, from the White House to the Senate, the House of Representatives, the City of Evanston, and the Gray Street Block Club at a time when Yes We Can is under attack and government is not supposed to work. I'm here to say government works. Uh, Morty, you can't leave right now, though. <laughs> After the call from Washington about the 18 million, when I'd had no time to tell anyone except our city manager the news, the phone rang again. It was Northwestern University's President Shapiro. He said, hello. I couldn't wait for the obligatory, how are you? <laughs> I shouted into the phone, Morty, I'm having the best day I've ever had as mayor of the city of Evanston. And he didn't miss a beat. He said, because I called? <laughs> After I was done shouting, no, not because you called. I finally got to tell him about the 18 million, and Morty was great, a terrifically supportive audience, and eventually we even talked about the reason he'd called. <laughs> Later that day, a man staggered into my office carrying a huge basket of food. The card said, for the celebration, and it was signed Morty. Dar and I each took something, and then that basket went where it belonged to the Community Development Department. Relations with Northwestern University are a constant state of the city topic with a new president of Northwestern, a new city manager, a new city council, and a new mayor. There is an opportunity to create a model for town gown relations, and we are all too smart to let this get away from us. There will always be problems when residents and students live in close proximity. Lifestyles are different. Waking and sleeping hours are different. <laughs> The challenge is not to avoid problems, though that would be nice, and some can be avoided. 
but the real challenge is to be able to resolve them with goodwill on both sides, and that we have and that we will do. Northwestern is a great university. They're an asset in the community, and they are going to be more of an asset. Great things are happening with the Center for Civic Engagement, and President Shapiro has promised to encourage businesses that are incubated at NU to stay in Evanston. We are all happy that relations in, in, with NU are improving, in, even when we're wearing uh, very small Auburn jerseys after a bad ending to an <laughs> Outback game. It was a good game, though. I promise, uh, this is the one thing I will promise today, that for the sake of town-gown relations, I'm not going to make any more bets on sporting events for a while. <laughs> 2009 marked a year in which, now you can go, Morty. <laughs> <Pardon>. <laughs> <laughs> 2009 marked a year in which the economic woes of the nation were reflected in the budget crisis facing the city of Evanston. It has been decades since we have faced lower property values, lower sales and business revenues, and higher unemployment all at the same time. The city reacted in 2009 by freezing property taxes and by passing a general fund budget that was 4.4 million less than in 2008. Midway through this fiscal year, we realized that our revenues would not come in as projected. And to limit our use of reserves, the city is holding the line on expenses, and we hope to end the year $3 million under our budget. In October of this year, we realized that next year's budget would be no better than the current one, and that permanent steps needed to be taken to provide sustainable services in this economy. Our city manager instituted a new budget, public budget process that solicited innovative solutions from city staff, Evanston residents, and businesses to balance our budget. This process has resulted in some tough decisions regarding long-standing city programs, staff reductions, salary freezes, and more. All of these decisions were necessary to deliver a budget with no property tax increases. While all department services were considered for reductions, I am proud to report that our efforts to date have resulted in virtually no planned reductions in frontline public safety services but many wonderful people did lose their jobs. If any of you are hiring, you would be wise to consider hiring some of the fabulous city workers we could not retain. Having adopted the budget last Monday night, our task is not through. It is not possible to cut nine and a half million from Evanston's budget without the possibility of unintended consequences. We know that we may have to wait longer for everything from building permits to rental ice skates. If any critical services are impacted, we have money in reserves and will act quickly to solve the problem. There are so many accomplishments in the last year of which the city of Evanston can be proud. I'm going to get in trouble with our staff because I'm going to highlight only a few. In April, Business Week magazine and Forbes magazine praised Evanston's remarkable labor pool of talent, the existence of a thriving business community, and our quality of life. Business Week had us listed in their top 50, and Forbes put us in the top 25. JPI likes stats, too. The Chamber works hard to tell Evanston's story, and the Chamber does it well. Thank you, Chamber of Commerce. I think you had something to do with those two articles. Evanston has experienced considerable successful economic development during the past 20 years. 2009 was challenged by the Great Recession, yet Evanston businesses deserve congratulations. They preserved and continued to improve upon our dynamic downtown, neighborhood commercial areas, and industrial districts. New development by the Mather has led to new state-of-the-art senior housing with a second building already under construction. New restaurants have continued to open despite the severe economy. As a matter of fact, I just got Artie's Frozen Custard will be opening soon, and they're here today. <laughs> Northwestern University continues major facility renovation and planned new construction, which contributes greatly to the city's permit revenues. 
the city adopted a new economic development strategy focusing on business retention and attraction, working closely with partners throughout the city. The implementation of this strategy in 2010 will be both productive and timely. Having signed the U.S. Mayor's Climate Protection Act in 2006, we've done many great things in the area of sustainability. In September, we were awarded almost $750,000 through the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act to switch to more efficient lighting in several city facilities, implement a recycling program throughout the city's commercial districts, weatherize up to 60 low and moderate income units, and to install the city's first municipal solar photovoltaic and solar thermal systems at the water plant and two fire stations. The city adopted a green controversial uh, green building ordinance for commercial multifamily and city buildings, along with passing a more stringent energy code. At the end of January, the city completed its year-long effort to convert all residential customers from 18-gallon recycling containers to 65 and 95-gallon containers, greatly increasing our capacity to collect recyclable materials. In the area of technology innovation, our city manager, Wally Bobkowitz, is committed to making us leaders not only regionally but nationally in the use of technology to provide services to the community more efficiently and to allow much enhanced communication between the community and the city, if you can imagine Evanston's community <laughs> communicating even more. We have a task force working on the Google application with hopes of wiring all of Evanston with a revolutionary amount of bandwidth, a hundred times faster than the fastest available internet access here today. Recent innovations include the creation of the Citizens New Media Advisory Board, which will advise and contribute to new media efforts in the city of Evanston, the entrance into the social networking scene. Our city council meetings are now available for viewing online via YouTube, and we have been leaders in the creation of a budget website to foster communication between the city and residents during this budget season. Next, I want to thank our health department for their outstanding work under the leadership of Avonda Thomas in coordinating a citywide response to the H1N1 outbreak. We hosted school-based and community clinics vaccinating 12,554 residents, including Northwestern University students, in three weeks. This is a huge accomplishment in such a short time, showing that our health department is prepared to meet the health needs of our community in an emergency situation. And Ivanda is here today. Ivanda, would you stand up? <laughs> our very own Robert Crown Center is producing world-class ice skaters left and right, <laughs> such as Angel Giordano and Christopher Davis, who were named the 2010 United States National Juvenile Ice Dance Champions. And of course, Shawnee Davis. Go Shawnee. <laughs> he has another gold and silver medal and we're hoping he'll, he'll come and we'll throw him another party. <laughs> the city continues its commitment to public art with the installation of new public art on the Custer Street Bridge and on top of the Maple Avenue parking garage. With some good planning and sound decision-making ability of Interim Director of Public Works, Suzette Eggleston, we have managed to get on very well this winter without exhausting our snow removal funds like many of our neighbors, and at the same time, we've kept our roads clear. The Water Division installed a $500,000 anchor ice control system funded through the Illinois EPA which enables the delivery of water during extreme cold weather conditions that can be conducive to the formation of anchor ice, which almost completely blocked the intake pipes in Lake Michigan last year. City staff has met with representatives from several communities in the greater Chicago metropolitan area regarding the potential of increasing our tax base and uh, becoming their wholesale water supplier. 
All of these communities expressed interest in, this, in pursuing this endeavor. For obvious business reasons, we're going to spend very little time publicly discussing our business plans and lots of time enacting them. The heroes and heroines of the police and fire department deserve our thanks today and every day for their outstandingly courageous work. Saving the best news for last, thanks to the efforts of the Evanston Police Department under the leadership of Chief Richard Eddington, the city has experienced a 13.4% decrease in serious crime in Evanston in 2009. This is incredible. The last question I am frequently asked about the state of the city, and in many ways the most important one, is how is the council? Working with Judy Fisk, Lionel Jean-Baptiste, Melissa Wynn, Don Wilson, Dolores Holmes, Mark Tendum, Jane Grover, Ann Rainey, and Colleen Burris is an honor. They are hardworking, smart, dedicated, and they make their decisions based on what they think is best for the whole community. As I said at the beginning of this speech, the state of a city cannot be judged solely by whether or not we have problems. All cities have problems during the Great Recession. The issue is how we resolve those problems. The work that our council did on the budget made many people unhappy as programs were cut. Everything we were spending money on was important to someone but the council persevered. They deserve to be congratulated for their work on the budget and much more. The answer to how is the council is they're an extraordinary group of people. Because of them and because of all of you, the city that we all love is doing well. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, Jeff Corey is here. He's the head of the Evanston's Cultural Arts Affairs. And I'd like to thank him for all his help with this presentation. Um, and now, I would like, it's my pleasure, to announce the recipients of this year's Mayor's Awards for the Arts. Before we begin, I would like to thank artist Elizabeth Ockwell, who has donated the lovely etchings that will be presented to today's honorees as part of her community's service as a resident artist at the Noyes Cultural Arts Center. Uh -huh. Are we organized, guys? <laughs> Come on up here, Larry. You don't have to sit down. Up. Come all the way. This close? Hi. Uh, I mean, I've never done this before, but let's, you've never gotten it before no, either, so it's fine. It's exciting. <laughs> Since 1985, the Actors Gymnasium has been one of the premier arts organizations in Evanston. Their success and devotion towards providing young and old artists alike with the skills necessary to bring a new physicality to the American theater is unparalleled. They really do teach people of all ages, except mine, to fly. <laughs> the Actors Gymnasium is a school for circus and performing arts. I mean, we have a circus in Evanston. <laughs> a producer of original daring works of physical theater and a talent resource for unique entertainment. They also offer special workshops, classes, and camps. The city is proud to have the Actors Gymnasium in residence at the Noyes Cultural Arts Center. Their achievements include award-winning productions in collaboration with many leading Chicago area arts organizations, including Piven Theater, Looking Glass Theater, Light Opera Works, and the Museum of Science and Industry. For their innovative arts program and unique contribution to the city of Evanston's cultural community, 
and because I love having a circus in town, did I mention that? I congratulate them. I'm pleased to present the Mayor's Award for the Arts to Mr. Larry DeStasi, the Artistic Director at the Actors Gymnasium. <laughs> Um, thank you, Mayor Tisdall, for, for this great honor that you've given to us um, and, and all that you have done for us over the years. I should thank um, Mayor Morton as well, since it is a two-mayor system. Um, you, you have actually helped us so much over the years as well. Um, this, this means a lot to us. Thank you so much. Um, can I go on? No. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the individual recipient of this year's Mayor's Award for the Arts is Karen Thompson, the founder and executive director of Literature for All of Us. Uh, when I saw that they were nominated, I was not going to, uh, I thought, oh, Karen's a friend of mine, and she's won all sorts of awards, including from the White House. But then I read the letter nominating Karen. And so I would like to call Ms. Jasmine Hentz, uh, the sister of Sonia Nick Nixon, who wrote the nomination. Jasmine, come up here. <laughs> Jasmine, with Sonia's uh, permission, is going to read the letter, and you will know exactly, without hearing anything more from me, why I did this. It is with great enthusiasm and excitement that I highly recommend Ms. Karen Thompson for the 2009 Mayor's Award for the Arts. Her dedication to the needs of the risk of the youth and the children is one that can only be surpassed by a few leaders. My relationship with Karen and literature for all of us began in 1999 when I attended a book group for junior high girls. I was a lost soul and was guided into a new world where I was able to express myself through reading and writing. This was a place where I learned to love myself because someone believed in me. On that first day, I took a pen and I wrote. I wrote about love, pain, my father, and my mother. With guidance and a gentle push from Ms. Karen and other book group leaders, I found a spark inside me and pulled out a flame. Out came a new me. I joined the program in seventh grade and participated for three years. Literature for All of Us helped me escape from the unstable home life infested with drugs, physical and mental abuse, and anger. I hated myself simply for what I had come out of and what, and that I was on a self-destructive path. By attending the group, I learned about self-love and the beauty that comes from respecting oneself, and I began to use poetry as an outlet for my anger and other feelings. My people skills improved greatly. I began to hold my, my head high and walk with confidence, and I actually visualized goals of a better future for myself, college, a career, traveling the world, and bettering my life and myself. Goals that just a short while after were believed to be unattainable for a person like me. What I received in a book group was the greatest gift anyone can ever give, the gift of hope and the gift of dreams. My connection to literature for all of us continued to, an open, to open up opportunities for me long after my participation in book group ceased. I became a, a youth leader working for positive change for girls. I met Nikki Giovanni and other published poets. This encouraged me to enter poetry contests and I won first place in a writing contest at Evanston Township High School. I read my poems at numerous events including the Beijing Plus Five UN Conference on Women in Chicago. I was even selected to be a representative for Literature of All of Us when they won the Coming Up Taller Award from First Lady Laura Bush and the President's Committee on the Arts and Humanities. Can you imagine that? Me, self-hating girl who became, from, became a nothing, standing proud and tall in a pinstripe soup at the, White House, at the White House. My relationship with Karen continues to grow and develop. She has been there for me through every step of my life. After 10 years, she still cares my, about my success and happiness as much as she did on the first day we met. Karen's passion for helping troubled youth lives through her actions, her walk, and her talk. You can see she drives and possesses every time you look into her deep blue eyes. I have no doubt that every life she touches will be blessed with love and encouragement as mine has been. Because for Karen, there is no other way. Today I am a proud mother of a beautiful eight-month-year-old son. 
Katim and an alumna of Emory University, class of 2008. I read to my son every night before bed. I encourage him, kiss him, dance with him, play with him, and teach him. These are things that were not too common in my home. And I do all these things not just because he is my son and I love him, but because literature for all of us has taught me that there is a better way to live. And I, in turn, am teaching my son the better way to live. I can think of no other person that is more worthy and deserving of the 2009 Mayor's Awards for the Arts. Thank you for listening to my story. Sincerely, Sonia Shade Mixon, the group, book group alumna. so much, Mayor Tisdall, Liz, and the Evanston Chamber of Commerce, the Evanston Arts Council. I am truly honored to get this award um, for such work that is so um, rewarding. Rewarding. I know we all love our children and our children of Evanston, and um, it's been a privilege to be able to have an organization that really opens worlds by opening books. That's our tagline, opens worlds by opening books. And you can, you can see that it, it really touches young people to find a book in which they can see themselves reflected and where they can talk about their lives and, and think about and dream about new dreams and new lives. And um, I want to say that when this, when this was founded, um, it was never just me, and I have to thank and acknowledge so many of you in the room tonight, uh, today, today, that I know I gotta shut up, but I, let me just say, let me just say that there are board members here that, you know, that, and I have a staff. Can I just acknowledge them? Yes. Because there's so many of you that donated and that supported literature for all of us from the beginning, was born in Evanston, went from nothing to serving five to 600 kids. 12, 13 years later. And people that started are here, Nikki Pearson and Mildred Harris. Stand up, please, you guys stand up, come on. And, 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 and so I don't forget my husband is here who supported me through all of this with taking care of the family when I was busy all the time. Thank you, Doug Thompson over here. Stand up, Doug, come on. And then this table in the corner represents literature for all of us. And we have staff members Barbara Greer and Abby Leninga, and, and we have advisory board member Roberta Rubin, and we have our board chair Lisa Karen, who I think just had to walk out. And Jan Belukas, who's a longtime Evanston resident, whose idea this was. She's my buddy from way back. And then I have the five program staff that deliver this program with so much love and heart and artistry. Rebecca, please stand up, you guys. LaCoya Cato. Bursnet Blackman, Sarwat Rumi, Rebecca Brown, and Rachel Hudak. I'm done in one minute. When, when Sonia wrote that letter and she talked about the other book group leaders, it's not just me, and it took all these people, and there's many wonderful, wonderful stories out there because it's just a good idea to be kind and loving through books and writing. Thank you. Thank you. And now I have to introduce Paul Giddings and Penny Rothweiser, whose name I always mispronounce, co-chairs of the Arts and Business Committee of the Evanston Arts Council. Take it away. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a tough act to follow. We get to do the fun stuff, no speeches, just to give out pretty awards. As the mayor said, we are the Arts and Business Committee. Uh, Paul and I co-chair the committee. You've seen us here before. That's the committee that of the, uh, you know, we're subcommittee of the Evanston Arts Council that is responsible for bringing the arts and business communities together. And we think that one of the best ways that we've done that in the recent past is the Art Under Glass project I'm sure many of you have seen it. That's we've been filling empty storefronts with art from local artists. 
And it's, you know, I mean, it's a very exciting project. And last year, Jim Nash was looking for a way to spruce up some of his empty windows. And at the same time, the committee was looking for a way to showcase our local artists. And Art Under Glass was born. Yeah, of course, we'd like to all see thriving businesses, you know, in our stores, uh, in our storefronts. But for now, this is a program that really works. It works for everybody. It gives the local artists a chance, a chance to uh, get exposure for their work, brings attention to the stores that need to be leased, and it beautifies and enlivens our community. So, excuse my advertisement, but if anybody has a window you want to fill with art, let me know. <laughs> Uh, before I present this award, I'd like to announce one more thing. The committee is, we're not just focusing on visual art. Uh, this fall, we're going to be presenting Evanston's first performing arts festival. Nobody knows about this yet, except the few of us who, who have started putting this together. It's going to be called Backstage Evanston. We're very, very excited about this project. About a dozen local performing arts groups will get together. Uh, it's going to be at Northwestern. You'll hear a lot more about it in the coming months. We'll be looking for sponsors. And let me introduce Paul Giddings, co-chair of the Arts and Business Committee. Thanks, Penny. Uh, Penny mentioned the purpose of our committee. You've heard uh, great presentations to wonderful parts of our art community today. And one of the things that we should recognize is that in most cases, art can't happen with support without financial support from somewhere. As government resources shrink, and I think we've heard that very, very clearly today, the burden falls more heavily on the business community. About three years ago, we started this award to recognize those businesses that actually stepped up to the plate and support the arts. The first award went to Whole Foods Market for their uh, support of multiple programs. Last year, Romano Brothers, who as you know, supports many, many things in the city. And this year, we chose Jim Nash and Farnsworth Hill as our recipient because of their absolutely fantastic support of Art Under Glass. There are going to be other things, as Penny mentioned, coming down the road. And I want all of you to remember, without the business community working together with the arts community, this city of ours would not nearly be as much fun to have two mayors. So uh, <laughs> let's always remember the business community aspect of this. And without further ado, I'd like to present the award to Jim Nash. Thank you, Jim. You My bad. I forgot to announce that the award, would you the, hold that up? It's beautiful, isn't it? Was designed by our own Lena Fryer, who is sitting right there. Well, this is very much an honor, and uh, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I, uh, Penny asked me about two weeks ago uh, how we came up with the idea of displaying some of the artwork. And I explained to her how I, I uh, sort of came to the idea. And then about three days ago, something hit me. And this award, although my name is on the plaque and, and the company name and so forth, and I appreciate it very much. This is really a community award. And the reason I say that is because I sat in a Evmark board of directors meeting about eight years ago. Maybe it was seven. But uh, Ira, Gola came, Ira Golan came in and said, I have this wonderful idea I want to present to the board of Evmark. And we sat there and we listened. And his catchphrase was, art is the heart of downtown Evanston. And that sort of stuck with me. And I hung on to that idea, but didn't know what to do with it. And about eight or nine months ago, I was walking down the street, and I decided to stop in and see if my client's money was still safe at the bank. And I, I talked to Howard Kane. And we were talking about the idea of displaying something in the windows and the storefronts and so forth. And a day or two later, I ran into Stamata Blanas from the Kiwanis Clubs uh, of Evanston, who's got a whole table here. And thank you very much. And Stamata had all these ideas about uh, displaying artwork and donating some of our empty storefronts to um, 
uh, affairs with kids. And so it's really a culmination. Uh, then I started talking to Jill Brazel and Penny, and it's been a real collaboration between everybody uh, that I've mentioned and, and more behind the scenes. So thank you very much, and uh, I appreciate it. And the storefronts do look much better. We've, we've got calls from all over the place. Um, citizens in New York, we've got a client uh, whose artwork is displayed in her, the, uh, she's donated her storefronts. Uh, she's in Wyoming, she's had a call from somebody saying, uh, we've noticed your, art, your uh, storefronts have been spruced up. So it's, it's, it's gone way beyond this room. Thank you very much and I uh, appreciate it. And just so you know, uh, we have a, a new exhibit starting with Art Under Glass. There will be an opening reception on Tuesday, March 9th. So we hope you can all join us and welcome the new artists. Thank you. Well, thank you everybody for coming today. And uh, I just want to uh, say that, uh, you know, our congratulations from the Chamber of Commerce to all the award winners. And thanks to Mayor Tisdall for her remarks. And I uh, hope you have a great weekend. And go Shawnee.